you everyone for coming today uh, to celebrate our, uh, our ceremony here for the dual admissions program uh, between uh, Northwood Community Technical College and the University of Minnesota. Uh, we're very excited to announce this uh, new partnership and I'll jump right into it by inviting uh, Don to the uh, podium here and, and uh, go to work and, and explain the program and talk a little bit about what it means to the students uh, in the agriculture programs. Well, greetings. Um, like Curtis had said, my name is Adon Nelson and I'm an agriculture instructor and program manager here at Northland. I teach general agriculture, animal science, and egg education. Uh, as a former alumnus and colleague at UMC and now I'm an instructor at Northland, I am so proud to be part of this day. Um, this is a monumental moment. We are breaking down walls and barriers that have not been done anywhere in the state. This is a Minnesota State or an old Minsky system institution working with a university institution. This is groundbreaking for a lot of um, areas and I think it's for a lot of areas soon to come. Um, and the best thing about all of this is that we're putting students first. This is for the students and this is going to enable them to move forward um, in their careers and in their successes. This past uh, spring, a group was formed to start the process of understanding what would both individ um, individual institutions look like and want to bring to the plate to each other. The programs that were decided upon looking at were um, agricultural education and animal science as a first go-to. We already had articulation agreements set forth in those, and so we looked at how can we duly enroll students at Northland and at the University of Minnesota Kirkston. So what this uh, Memorandum of Understanding means, or MOU, um, allows students, current students and our future students, is they're going to be admitted to both institutions. So on admittance, they will be in animal science and egg ed, they'll be full-time basically student status at each place. Um, it's going to allow for the students to be success at the forefront of their academic goals by allowing them to do also reverse transfers. So if they want to go from UMC to Northland, they can, or Northland to UMC. So it goes both ways, which is just going to allow a seamless way for them to move back and forth as needed for classes. Um, if a student is in extra, extra need of extra help, uh, if a student um, just university is too big for them at the time, they can come to a smaller place. Then it also allows their stepping stone for a two-year degree here at Northland for those students to continue on to a four-year degree and move into the university system again for the students and making it a seamless transition. Also, for the faculty, we're looking at both institutions are going to be provided, um, or be, I should say, be encouraged, and hopefully will provide opportunities to collaborate and sharing, joint development, alignment of curriculum, and continue, continue, excuse me, the quality and efficiency of our agriculture programs. Uh, there'll be also opportunities for students for joint activities, um, like exchange of joint scientists, uh, different, different conferences, um, using some technical staff members on both sides of the field, and anything that would further relate um, the engagement of students into the agriculture community. NCTC and UMC enrollment recruitment staff are also going to be working collaboratively together. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities right now with the National FFA Convention. We're already still there. So now let's work together in recruiting those students in agriculture. We are the biggest industry in the United States. Um, looking at all aspects of the agriculture, food, and fiber industry, we were going to bring them all together. Um, and above all, again, we're providing um, this for students and providing as many opportunities for those students to succeed as an employer in the egg, food, and natural resource community. And I'm just so honored to be a part of this process. This, is, this has been a dream of mine for a long time, so this has been great. Up next, we're going to have Dr. Professor Dr. Lyle Wester is going to come up, which is a natural segue because he is an animal science and agricultural education professor. Um, he's one of my former professors, actually, when I went to UMC. So it's, it's an honor to work with him and be working with him. Um, and it's a great segue after what I've just said to introduce Lyle. It is a great pleasure to be here. <clears throat> Northland Community College Administration, UMC Administration, dual enrollment or admissions committee members and media. As a 30-year faculty member at UMC, almost, including close, last chance to get close, 
I, I will say that this is perhaps one of the most creative educational ventures that I've seen in 30 years. You might say, why? Well, dual admission and the related components that you will have heard some of and will hear more of, you know, we've discussed students' interests, and they should always be first, but that puts students' interests first. It greatly reduces artificial barriers and the potential impeding of student progress for graduation and ultimately career, gainful career employment. One of the joys of working here in Northwestern Minnesota, and, and Kurt, you've heard me say this before, I know, but uh, it, it's the fact that our sparse population kind of helps people and entities to realize that we need to be working together as a region, right, rather than separately or individually. And in the case of educational institutions, the real winners of working together are the students. Every student brings different interests, educational aspirations and needs. This concept will allow us to tailor educational opportunities to best meet the goals of prospective and enrolled students. To all of you, and many of you sitting out here who worked so hard to bring this concept to fruition, I give you my compliments. To those of you who may be seeing this concept for the very first time, you are seeing a very futuristic approach to higher education. If Minnesota is to continue being a leader in preparing young people for our workforce, which was the goal, if you remember those of you that are old enough, 40, 50, 60 years ago, if we're gonna continue being that leader, this is a sneak preview of the cutting edge educational paradigm shifts that need to come. It will be exciting to see this implemented. Thank you all. I'm so pleased to work at one of the institutions, one of the two institutions that are willing to take these steps to ensure that Minnesota youth acquire the education they need seamlessly. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, my, my chancellor at the University of Minnesota Crookston, Dr. Mary Holtz Kloss, and uh, Dr. Chancellor, uh, we, we refer to you as Dr. Mary so often, or Chancellor Mary, but it is a pleasure to introduce you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Professor Western, for your leadership to the University of Minnesota Crooks at 30 some years. And uh, again, I want to echo what others have said. Thank you to all of you who are sitting here who made this happen. And also, a great thanks to the gentleman to my right, who I'll be introducing in just a few moments officially, but uh, Dr. Dennis Bono, who is president of Northland Community and Technical College. I'm a newbie to Minnesota. I've been here for about 11 months now. And we first met in September, October, and talked about creative and innovative thoughts and ways to, uh, to do that. So for those of you who are not in academia, for something to happen in eight or nine months, this is amazing uh, that our institutions could come together that quickly. And as we said, it's for the students, and it's also for the agricultural industry. Every year in the United States, there's about 130 to 140 colleges of agriculture in the U.S. And every year, our businesses require at least about 58,000 individuals in the agricultural fields. And unfortunately, and those are individuals who have a bachelor's of science, and unfortunately, um, we're really only able to graduate about 35, 36,000 students across the United States in agriculture. So in the agricultural field, for, you, for jobs that require a Bachelor's of Science, which is a very uh, oriented STEM, science, technology, um, engineering, and math program, that we are generally around 22 to 23,000 graduates short in the agricultural industry. So as we were talking about this, it's like, what can we do together to get more students involved in an industry which has an amazing job placement, 
Many of our graduates when they graduate from Bachelors of Science um, from the University of Minnesota Crookston, University of Minnesota Crookston have four to five job offers. These are well-paying jobs. There are very few industries that have that kind of demand. And so we are responding uh, to the national demand for agricultural jobs, which again, um, when many people are looking at where do you send your students or what might be potential areas, that's an area where I tell everybody, everybody eats, which means that there is a constant demand and has continued to be a constant demand in the workforce for students who are trained. So this is the beginning of, of a really creative way of us working together to say that the importance of getting more students into the field so they can be successful and have these wonderful careers in the area, particularly in this region of the country where agriculture is really the lifeblood of, of our, one of those lifebloods of our economy. So we're indeed very honored to be here today in a few moments to sign this agreement. And it is a great pleasure to introduce the president of, of North Lane Community Technical College, Dr. Dennis Bonner, for some comments. What a fun event. Um, I, I'm going to, uh, I like, I like Chancellor Mary. I think that's a great thing to, you know, as a way to refer to you as. But uh, we met, uh, Mary and I met last summer for the first time. And we weren't together more than uh, 15, 20 minutes and we realized very quickly that we shared some of the same vision. Uh, she is a workforce development chancellor. And uh, I've been the workforce development president. Uh, that's kind of how, where our career path took us. And uh, she right away wanted to explore some, some new things that we could do together. And I pulled out of my bag of tricks this uh, old Michigan model. I say old, not too old, but uh, several years ago, I worked out a program very similar to this uh, between Kellogg Community College and Western Michigan University that turned out to be a model that uh, has now been replicated several times throughout the state of Michigan. And that is the concept of dually enrolling students uh, into a program. And the, the, the power of this program really is for, the, it's, it's perhaps based a little bit in perception, but it's where students can say on day one, I'm a student at the University of Minnesota Crookston pursuing a bachelor's degree. I happen to be taking some classes right now at Northland Technical and Community College because that makes sense for me in my life. It makes it more convenient and it's a little more affordable and it's all going to work out really well. But their purpose is that they're going to achieve and their goal is to achieve a bachelor's of education or a bachelor's in agriculture education. And how wonderful is that for them to be able to share that with their parents and family and friends and uh, it certainly will result in more students getting excited about moving into this field, into this area, and pursuing a higher level degree. The, um, you often talk about, refer to win-win kind of scenarios, and let me just kind of count the wins because I'm counting five big winners here. Uh, the first one, as everyone has already said, this is a big, huge win for the student. They don't have to take a program and hope and believe that someday they'll get the transfer and will that work out, will I have to duplicate courses? No, from day one, their students at the university as well as the community college, and it will be seamless and it works for them just absolutely wonderful. It is amazingly complex for those of us working behind the scenes, the registrars and the advisors and all that kind of stuff, but that's invisible to the student. The student gets to see this as something very simple, very clean and very efficient and it will work well for them. Obviously it's a win for the institutions. We're going to get greater participation in, in programs that uh, uh, we value and want to see grow. Um, the, the win for the ag industry is uh, they're in need of people with these kinds of credentials and this type of education and so they're going to benefit from more people graduating in programs. Um, let's. Uh, Maybe I'm hedging a little bit here, but let's say the taxpayers win on this one because, you know, I, I've never seen anybody's tax bill in Minnesota broken up to where they pay some tax to the University of Minnesota and some tax to Minnesota State. I think they just pay tax and they want to see good things happen in higher education. And we have collaborated, we have shown and demonstrated that that collaboration can occur 
Uh, and in fact, the taxpayers are getting the very best value for their tax dollar. And so the final win, because you've got to give them a little bit of credit, throw them a bone every now and then, is the legislators who would like to see this kind of collaboration happen. They like to know that when they're fighting for, for dollars to go towards higher education, that higher education is working together. And this is one of the maybe, I, I don't want to say first example in the state, but it is one of the best examples in the state of how two higher education institutions can work together for the benefit of the students and the industry. So that's, that's five. Um, that's all I got. I, I don't have any more. The best team I go on last is everybody said all the important stuff. So uh, let's get on with the signing and uh, thank you again for coming today. Some We're going to need some other some signatures here. Uh, here. So, so we have so some places to get our stuff. Get our stuff, and then they can come. So write them a sign, and then we'll sign up. So being able to see programs like this, projects like this, come together uh, so quickly and, and candidly so easily, uh, based on the leadership, is, is a real uh, it's a real benefit to, to see progress and, and programs being grown in the agriculture industry. So thank you again for my level as well on, on providing that leadership and, and again uh, supporting the activity. Um, with that, I want to thank everyone for coming. And again, we do have some uh, snacks and, and some drink uh, over to the side. Feel feel free to enjoy. And uh, thank you again for joining us today.